fixed to the nose of a plane flying overhead. NATO spokesman Jamie Shea says the repeated bombardment should wear down the Yugoslavs. It's a snowball uh, uh, affair. Uh, a snowball begins in a small way, but as it goes down the mountain, it picks up more and more momentum, and eventually it becomes a very large and highly irresistible object. And I think we're seeing the same, that this air campaign is having a cumulative effect, and there will come a moment when the pressure simply reaches breaking point for President Milosevic and his military, and at that moment we will have the success that we've been looking for. Shea barrack act in the Balkans. The swelling NATO aggression has become a ruthless war of extermination against the peoples of Yugoslavia. The Russian media are echoing those views, but anti-NATO sentiment is fostering a culture of fear. And as CNN's Steve Harrigan reports, Russia's attempts to rally its people may lead to unforeseen problems. In the heart of Moscow, taxi driver Anatoly Kuznetsov says he's afraid of a NATO attack. This attack on Yugoslavia is just a dress rehearsal for NATO. Russia is next. Anatoly is not alone. In a recent poll by the Russian Center for Public Opinion, 63 percent, almost two-thirds of all Russians, say that Russia has reason to fear an attack from the NATO alliance. Uh, who's next, the Russians say? Who's next? It's a very uh, important question for all of us. Most of the same pictures of NATO strikes against Yugoslavia that are shown in the West are shown on Russian television. But here, those pictures tell a very different story. The refugees are trying to save themselves from the NATO bombing. Instead of preventing a humanitarian catastrophe, NATO is causing one. In this case, it's not the pictures talking or the refugees themselves, but the Russian government. The two largest television channels in Russia are controlled by the state. We try to bring the Russian government's viewpoint to our viewers. That viewpoint blames the refugee crisis in Yugoslavia on NATO airstrikes. But analysts warn stirring up anti-Western sentiment could backfire on the Russian government. The danger is that uh, they might uh, energize nationalism xenophobia, anti-Western feelings that uh, they will be not in a position to control. And in an election season, a battle to control those feelings, or to push them even further, has already begun. Steve Harrigan, CNN, Moscow. Have both the, the B-52s and those B-1Bs uh, now stationed uh, there at, uh, at Fairfoot uh, with a capability uh, of bombing through the cloud and uh, our correspondent Andrew Moore is actually there at Fairfoot uh, and Andrew it looks as if this particular aircraft at, at least uh, may be starting some kind of operation yes I can see uh, as you can see two of the B-52s taxiing off at the moment it looks as if uh, a third will be joining them fairly shortly what we never know here at Fairfoot is whether these planes are on a bombing mission or whether they are returning to the States, but uh, certainly looks as if they'll be taking off fairly shortly. And uh, we've certainly seen evidence of some ground activity there at uh, Fairfield within the, the last few hours. That's right. Uh, earlier on in the day, uh, just past where those B-52s are taxiing now are the, uh, the B-1B Lancer bombers, and we certainly saw uh, bombs being loaded onto those planes. Some of these uh, B-52s have been loaded with cruise missiles, whether these particular planes are armed or not, we just don't know. And obviously for operational reasons, uh, we're not made aware of, of what uh, sort of uh, 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 bombing missions might be going on. But uh, we saw earlier pictures of those sort of plane spotters gathering uh, at the edge of the airfield, looking through the, uh, the, the wire uh, at all this going on. That's right. I mean, in front of me now, there must be about 100 people watching uh, these planes from this particular location all around the airfield it's been a big problem for the police there have been so many people coming here to see the planes it's causing uh, traffic problems uh, there have been a few demonstrators here as well I can see a few banners left on the, the fence here saying stop the bombing a very small demonstration though it has to be said but bearing in mind the sensitivity of these operations uh, and the fact that uh, these planes are are operational almost all the time uh, security very important there that's right. Uh, security has been heightened in the last few days. Um, certainly 
within the perimeter. We've seen the police patrolling. Uh, they've been patrolling around the perimeter. And whenever you see these, these planes, especially when the cruise missiles are being loaded on board, you see armed guards around to make sure that uh, uh, nobody uh, crosses this uh, perimeter fence, this barbed wire fence here. But you are still able to uh, obviously film uh, and uh, bring us these live pictures uh, of uh, the movements on the, the tarmac from uh, the edge of the airfield. That's right, from the perimeter fence, anyone can come along and, and see what's happening. Uh, the American Air Force, when uh, operations are over, are, are being very open with us, uh, as open as they can be. So often when uh, a bombing mission has been completed, then they will confirm what, is, what has happened. Well, we, we can uh, see some of the posters there, Andrew, just to interrupt you uh, with, with, as you said, uh, um, the message from the demonstrators. How vocal have those demonstrations been? There was a group of about a dozen demonstrators who were here just after lunchtime and uh, they were chanting here for about uh, half an hour and, and then left their posters behind. Uh, there was another similar small demonstration a few days ago, but certainly no, no mass demonstrations here. Uh, the, the people who've come here just to watch the planes, uh, there are far more of them than there are demonstrators. And indeed the local population now presumably used to hearing these uh, jets screaming off at all times of the day and night. That's right. I mean, this uh, airbase here, RAF Fairford, one of the longest runways in Europe, two miles long, is, is normally effectively mothballed. But uh, recently, it's become a very busy and active airbase. Uh, at the moment, there are eight B-52s here, three on the taxiway, as we can see, five others left on the ground. And uh, on the other side of the base, the base uh, five of those uh, B-1 bombers. So certainly here, a very busy base and large numbers of support personnel have flown in to support these planes and with them of course there are the transport planes, the Galaxy transport planes coming and going. Uh, one of those uh, left Fairford earlier on today. Well Andrew, thanks uh, indeed for the moment for joining us but of course we'll return to you uh, as and when those planes uh, take off. Obviously it's going to take them some time to reach the end of that two mile runway but uh, Andrew for the moment thanks very much indeed. Carry it through. And indeed, just to bring you uh, right up to date on that, we're hearing now that uh, Mr Blair has spoken tonight uh, by telephone to Bill Clinton for about uh, 20 minutes or so. Downing Street said that they agreed that Friday night's raids showed Milosevic NATO's determination to take his military machine apart from top to bottom. Also uh, getting news of what Bill Clinton has said in his uh, weekly radio address to Americans, that the United States will stand with its NATO allies and see that Yugoslav President Milosevic pays a very high price for his actions in Kosovo. Our nation cannot do everything, he said. We can't end all the suffering. We can't stop all the violence. And indeed, we saw overnight uh, that attack on the uh, Yugoslav Interior Ministry and uh, headquarters of the secret police in Belgrade, described by Tony Blair as highly uh, successful. And uh, it was intimated that perhaps that latest attack was carried out by cruise missiles, which are capable of operating despite the continuing heavy cloud and bad weather uh, over Yugoslavia. And in addition to this air operation, Britain indicating that it's uh, trying to set up sanctuaries within Macedonia. Uh, and uh, Claire Short, we're told, the International Development Secretary, flying to Macedonia tomorrow with a team of officials to discuss how Britain can help uh, and perhaps establish a NATO air bridge into Macedonia uh, to take in food, blankets uh, and medicine. And indeed, uh, NATO discussing, in addition to this military operation, I can help with uh, establishing uh, better aid help in both uh, Macedonia and Albania where there are problems getting aid from uh, the capital Tirana to the border. The based element in Operation Allied Force is the USS Gonzales, an American Navy destroyer in the Adriatic. It is one of a new class of ships designed to avoid detection, seen as Martin Savage reports from aboard the Gonzales. Viewed from the air, the USS Gonzales might seem impossible to miss. But try and view the guided missile destroyer on radar, and it's possible you just might. You see, the Gonzales was built from the keel up to be a stealth ship. There's no such thing as an invisible ship, but uh, we can work within the laws of physics to, uh, to try and help ourselves out. And you'll notice, looking at the top side of the ship, that uh, everything tends to be very angular. Employing the same technology the Air Force uses to make its stealth fighters and bombers hard to spot on radar, the U.S. Navy worked to do the same with its new Arleigh Burke class of destroyers, all 9,000 tons of them. 
Almost every part of the ship's superstructure is angled in some way to reflect away rather than return an enemy's radar signal. It's the return that gives a ship away. The stealthy design goes down right to some of the smallest of details. The lifelines, for example, on an older vessel would be one-inch poles. Here, there's steel cable covered with rubber. Stanchions set at an angle in the deck and diamond shape. Items on the ship's exterior that can't be reshaped are instead covered with a special rubber coating that absorbs radar energy. That even includes the ship's gong. But it's not just a ship's shape that can give it away. So can heat, especially from its engines. What we want to do is reduce the uh, infrared signature that's put off by the ship's exhaust, exhaust system. We have the boundary layer infrared suppression system, which brings, get, brings uh, air from outside the ship into the exhaust system, mixes it, mixes it in with the uh, exhaust, reduces the temperature, and it, it, it uh, reduces the ability of a heat-seeking missile. The Gonzales also has a special system that uses air bubbles to greatly cut back the destroyer's noise as it passes through the ocean, making it tough to find with sonar. The end result, in war games in which the Gonzales had to penetrate enemy defenses to strike a prime target, the destroyer has a perfect record of kills. We have uh, completed two different exercises as we work through what we call the inner deployment training cycle. And the ship, during those exercises, was able to, as an opposing force, go against the opposite force and sneak up on them, basically, undetected. Aboard the USS guided missile destroyer Gonzales, when it comes to possible detection by a hostile force, out of sight and out of mind is the best policy. Martin Savage, CNN, aboard the USS Gonzales in the Adriatic. Hey, Bill. Natalie, uh, a day of very intermittent activity here since uh, very early this morning. Flights just every uh, two or three hours, usually just uh, one or two or three strike aircraft leaving, uh, sometimes complemented around the same time by uh, radar jamming and surveillance aircraft. But for the most part, uh, the pattern of the past few days has held here uh, very um, patchy flying from Aviano Air Force Base in northern Italy. Now, the sun is going down here. That's typically when the activity picks up. But so far, we're not even hearing that, that, that loud whine that typically means strike aircraft are beginning to taxi out onto the uh, tarmac, preparing to fly into Yugoslavia. We're not hearing that, just hearing the propellers of some presumably C-130s over there at the airbase. Uh, very patchy activity here, no doubt, presumably, down to the weather in the Balkans. They're simply not able to fly as many aircraft out of here as uh, presumably they would like to. Um, one thing that did not happen today as well, we were expecting uh, as many as 24 stealth uh, F-117 aircraft to come in here to uh, bulk up the 150 or so aircraft already here. Those stealth fighters have apparently gone to Germany instead. Uh, now, the only uh, novelty today, if you will, Natalie, uh, a gathering of a few hundred protesters. Now, all day long here at Aviano, the police presence grew. It became more difficult than usual uh, to get into the Air Force Base here. Uh, uh, more roadblocks than in the past few days as police braced for what they thought might be a pretty large demonstration. Well, the uh, protesters did turn out, but only a couple of hundred, mostly Italians, some uh, leftist groups, anarchist groups, some Christian groups. Uh, they uh, gave some speeches um, protesting the NATO airstrikes. Um, but for the most part, what had thought to be perhaps a demonstration that might amount to some trouble here was quite quiet. Um, and as we go into evening now here, as the sun goes down, as I said, remains quite quiet here. Still only intermittent activity here at Aviano Air Force Base in northern Italy. 90% of the combat missions over Yugoslavia are being launched from bases in Italy, and the backwash is now being felt in government circles in Rome. The communists in the center-left coalition are withdrawing two ministers from the cabinet, but say they'll still support the government in parliament. Peace protesters gathered today for a demonstration outside the Aviano airbase in northeastern Italy, the heart of Operation Allied Force. But the latest polls here indicate the television pictures of tens of thousands of desperate refugees fleeing Kosovo have had a great impact on public opinion here. The number of people who think the bombing is justified is rising significantly, and there's a strong surge of support for Italy to take a more active military role.
The poll also shows support for NATO action is strongest amongst the youngest. Support too for the American aviators at the base with a well, phone call you. from President right. Clinton. I, I know that I've taken you almost up to your departure time and I don't want to keep you late for your mission, but you just know we're all proud of you and what you're doing is very important for our country and for the future of the world. And we thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President, for the great words. Tonight, NATO's tactics will be the same, to grind down the military machine of President Milosevic. But the campaign is taking a lot longer than the planners thought. David Chater, Sky News, Aviano, Italy. ...targeted the Interior Ministry because this was the control center responsible for Serbian atrocities in Kosovo. The buildings are believed to have been virtually empty at the time, and there were no civilian casualties. We have shown that... We First report within the past hour or so that the... Kamenichki Bridge at the uh, city of Novi Sad, Yugoslavia's second largest population center, some 80 miles uh, north of Belgrade, was attacked. This is the second crossing over the river Danube there, which has been attacked and destroyed by NATO action. Uh, the first bridge went down on Wednesday night, blocking the river Danube, which is an important, in fact, vital waterway for many central European economies. And then this evening, confirmation, as you can see from these Serbian television pictures, that uh, a second bridge over the River Danube was attacked and sections of that bridge are also now in the River Danube. We had eyewitness reports a short time ago that perhaps at least one car, maybe more, we don't know, might have been on the bridge at the time of the attack. We certainly had eyewitness reports from Novi Sad there of emergency services rushing to the scene and perhaps trying to mount some sort of water rescue operation, but we have no exact confirmation of that at this stage, although a government official here did tell me that he did believe reports from the police in the area that there was at least one car on the bridge, but as I say, no visual confirmation of that at the moment. And then shortly after the attack on the Kamenichki Bridge in Novi Sad, a second report of yet another bridge uh, being hit at the city of Brechka Palanka, some 30 miles west of Novi Sad, that also hit. We await to see visual confirmation of that from Serbian television. There is the war in the air and there is a third war, the picture war. The images people see of the war and how those images shape their view of what's happening. Who is winning the picture war? Slobodan Milosevic, in one view. He is managing the war of pictures. This campaign of mass deportation is deliberately orchestrated by a number of clearly evident elements. Milosevic controls what Serbs see on Serb TV, captured Americans, a seemingly cordial meeting with a Kosovar leader, but others are also watching and they are seeing other pictures, other images. I'm not sure he's winning the war in the United States because the emotion of uh, three American men bruised and wounded being held captive uh, is a very powerful emotion for Americans. Where people might have wondered in the past, now universally he and his government is seen as a bunch of thugs. And that called Albanian terrorists. But the commander of the Pristina Corps said the border was secure. Patrols were depicted in high spirits and the latest batch of teenage recruits were shown taking their oath of allegiance. A Spanish television crew and a Dutch photographer were arrested on the Macedonian border for allegedly entering Serbia illegally. They appeared to have been forced to make public statements about NATO attacks. My personal opinion is that this is a, um, this is a crime uh, against civilians. NATO's forces have been bolstered by four fighter planes from Canada, and another eight will join them. Gary Lloyd, Sky News. You Another two million is coming from the Irish Republic. Tonight, more urgently needed supplies were flown out from Kent. At a small airfield in Kent, more than 20 tonnes of tents and blankets, ready to be loaded onto a cargo plane tonight. By tomorrow, they will provide shelter for Albanian refugees from Kosovo. This flight is one of a number of government-sponsored missions leaving the country over the next few days. Other countries have been providing their own aid, this plane arriving from Poland. And money to save lives is coming in, steadily. 
This centre in Bristol is taking about 400 calls a day. The charity hopes advertising will boost the response. Every time there's an ad that goes out on the radio, we have a, a bit of a flush of, of responses from people, but it's been slow and steady all day today and yesterday. Britain today doubled its commitment to £20 million. Other countries are emptying their pockets with sums as high as £32 million from the United States. So much aid and help for so many. But why has so little reached those in need? And on nighttime landings and a lack of cargo handling equipment is slowing the arrival of aid. The government has vowed that NATO will now act as a relief organisation to overcome the problem. We will continue to give this issue the priority it needs, responding to the human misery and the human need that we can see. And that is in stark contrast to the brutality and the callousness with which President Milosevic has created this misery. But where do the quarter of a million ethnic Albanians eventually go? Germany has said it's ready to take refugees, but stressed that they will have to return home if and when it's safe. Chris Rogers, Sky News. Human sources here are saying that there may well have been motorists using the bridge at the time it was attacked by that cruise missile. The Beta News Agency here is reporting several casualties as a result of the strike against the bridge. Also, we have as yet unconfirmed by NATO reports that another bridge at a town called Bratska Palanka, about 30 miles west of Novi Sad, was also hit. That bridge, an important link from Serbia to Croatia. Back to you, Joey. Friend, before you go here, what about uh, Mr. Molos? Over the last few days, the weather has been quite a problem. It's been misty, foggy, and more than the weather here, the problem is the weather over Yugoslavia. Uh, today, we're hearing many more planes taking off, and uh, matter of fact, there's a bit of noise behind me right now. Uh, we don't, of course, know the precise destination of these planes. Many of them are involved in patrols over the Adriatic, providing cover uh, for uh, NATO ships there. Also, they are flying over the uh, over Bosnia where there's a peacekeeping force. Uh, the feeling on the base is uh, they're looking forward to a little more clear weather so they can get back to action. A sense of the activity and the sound of it from CNN's Ben Wheat a minute, Aviana. Joey? NATO forces. CNN's David Ensor with our report. The announcement the USS Teddy Roosevelt and its carrier battle group will join NATO forces in operations against Yugoslavia means about another 50 combat planes for the Alliance arsenal. It also adds several more ships capable of firing cruise missiles. The Pentagon is also sending 13 F-117 stealth fighter bombers. NATO officials say they will use the increased firepower until Belgrade backs down. We are determined to keep this going until we stop the Serb armed forces. And we're hoping to do that very soon in the next few days. Our pressure is intensifying uh, all the time. But NATO and Pentagon officials remain frustrated they have been able to do so little to stop alleged Serb atrocities in Kosovo. We continue to attack those things that sustain their forces. As we've said from the beginning, you cannot stop this level of violence in Kosovo from air power instantly. Pentagon officials admit the A-10 planes designed to target tanks and troops on the ground have yet to fire in anger. A spokesman says, however, that Apache ground attack helicopters may soon be deployed. I would expect um, um, action to be uh, forthcoming on that, and uh, uh, I, that's all I can say at this stage. One days a week? I would expect relatively soon. The Apache helicopters could be very effective against Serb tanks and artillery. They move fast and low with considerable night capability. But they would require several hundred army support personnel, and their deployment would raise the risk of American casualties. The humanitarian tragedy is also getting Pentagon attention. A giant C-17 cargo plane left the U.S. carrying food for refugees in Albania. You saw these yesterday but um, this is a packet that uh, holds enough food uh, to feed one refugee for a day. It's about uh, 2,200 calories, and uh, it is uh, all, uh, it is non-meat, so it can be eaten by people of all faiths. What Pentagon officials are counting on the most, though, is a break in the weather. For the pilots, officials say the last 48 hours have been the worst. A break in the clouds would allow them to target with laser-guided weapons 
against Serbian forces on the ground in Kosovo. David Ensor, CNN Live at the Pentagon. In a hospital, according to the Serbian TV report, and the Serbian TV says that uh, these people were injured during the latest NATO strike on a bridge in Novi Sad. This is one of the two bridges that have been hit over the Danube River in the town of Novi Sad, the second biggest city in Yugoslavia. Uh, there is no independent confirmation that the injured shown in these pictures are in fact people who were injured in that strike, but that is what Serbian TV tells us. We'll take a break here and return with The more. Cold War chill in the air again. Russian warships are on the move, and Moscow is seething with anti-Western fury. The airwaves are full of pro-Serbian propaganda, with barely a mention of the suffering in Kosovo. This Russian electrical shop is throwing out its Western goods and using the American flag as a floor mop. It's an isolated incident, but this country is now united in opposition to the NATO airstrikes. These young Russians have come forward to volunteer to fight with the Serbs. Again, they're a small, extreme minority, but their numbers are growing as the war in Yugoslavia escalates. 24-year-old Vladimir says some of his colleagues have already left for Belgrade. We've got to stop this war. No one wants to fight, but maybe by going to Yugoslavia will make NATO and America think again and stop their stupidity. Amongst the political elite, tempers are flaring, with nationalist and communist MPs on the warpath. They're urging the government to break the international embargo and send arms to Yugoslavia. Powerful voices like the retired General Alexander Lebed have endorsed the plan. But the Kremlin is still urging caution. It's sending humanitarian aid and moral support to the Serbs, but nothing else. It's still hoping to produce a diplomatic miracle. We don't believe that ultimatums is the best choice in diplomacy, and we need uh, to give room to diplomacy to work, because force did not uh, prove that it's efficient. <laughs> But how long until Russia's patience snaps? So far, all Moscow's attempts to mediate have been ignored, fueling anti-Western sentiment here and raising worrying questions about the road ahead. As of now, uh, I don't see why Russia should get involved uh, in that conflict mil militarily. But if that happens, then that will not be a cold war. That will be a real war. For the moment, Russian anger Continuing with two Danube bridges hit, the Serbs say one.